right. Hi, I'm Olivia Tyler. I'm here with Linda Dillon. It is Monday, March 15th, 2021. We are talking about the Matchin Florida Opportunity Scholars Program as part of a project through the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program. Thank you for your time, Linda. I'm so glad that you can make it today. <laughs> Thank uh, you for having me. I just wanted to start off by asking um, a little bit about your high school experience. Um, did you always know that you wanted to come to college or UF specifically? Um, was your family supportive? Just what was your high school and prior to college like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was in high school, honestly, I just applied to four schools in Florida um, because I knew that I was going to want to have bright futures as like a tuition backup. Um, and so I applied to uh, University of South Florida, so USF, um, UCF, so uh, in Central Florida, um, FSU, Florida State, and then uh, UF. And UF was definitely my top choice. Um, and so I got into all four, but it was definitely like a difficult process for me because since my parents are first gen, like I'm first gen and my parents didn't go to college, um, they didn't know like the application process and how all that works with college board and even like SAT testing and things like that. And so uh, I'm really thankful for my guidance counselor, but at the same time, I did do have to do a lot of research on my own. Um, so that was definitely like one of the barriers I had to overcome. And so when I got into all four, I started looking at what scholarships they had with their acceptance letter. Um, and I was going to go to USF because of the fact that like I would still be at home because I'm originally my hometown is from Tampa. Um, and so that way I could just commute instead and it would be a little bit cheaper on my side of things. And then it was like, Maybe two weeks later, I got a letter um, from MFOS, so Match in Florida Opportunity Scholars Program. And they, like, when I saw that letter, I was shocked because I thought it was fake at first. They were saying that, you know, like everything is paid for and this was my top choice university. So, like, how is this even possible? Um, so, that was amazing. And I, like, called over my mom. I'm like, mom, look at this. She's like, what? <laughs> so it was definitely great. And that's like, after that letter, I was like, I'm definitely going to UF now. There is nothing holding me back. Um, and so I was very, very thankful for that. Right. Wow. That is, that must have been a shock. So it came pretty soon after um, you got accepted. Yes. Mm -hmm. It came pretty soon after I got accepted, but like, at that point, I was leaning more towards USF only mm -hmm. because I hadn't received their letter yet. And I had received an, uh, like a scholarship letter from USF. So it was like very close. And I'm glad I waited because yeah. decisions, those types of decisions are really big to make. And like, you have to choose wisely because it can decide what career you go into, what friends, like connections you meet, um, great mentors as well. So yeah. It definitely made a great difference. Right. And what are you majoring in? What did, did you apply under a specific major? Are you still on that path? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I applied at first. It was a French major just because I enjoyed languages so much. Um, but I did quickly change that after freshman year. Um, so currently I am a junior studying international studies and dual languages. And so dual languages, you have to choose two languages and culture to study. So I'm, wow. I chose French and Russian. So technically oh it's like three like majors, um, <laughs> but yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, and how do you have time for that? What is your schedule like? <laughs> Busy. Um, so I gained my second major last year um, and I did have some prerequisites for that already completed um, from mm -hmm. high school because I did take French in high school for four years. And so like that definitely helped a little bit. Um, just honestly, knowing how to plan your schedule is a big thing I learned in college. Um, so 
I made like a four year plan type of thing so that I could see if I could fit in all of my classes. Um, and it's possible if you have like full time, so like 17 or 18 credits each semester. Oh um, but yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then um, what ways do you think that MFOS has impacted or maybe changed your college experience? You mentioned at USF you would have been living at home. So I'm pretty, I bet that's a big difference. Are you in Gainesville? Yeah, I'm in Gainesville currently. Um, so it did make a big difference in terms of a lot of financial side of things. So for example, like here i'm able to live in gainesville in an apartment which i'm really thankful for but also i do not have to like work extra so i can solely focus on my studies which is why like i'm able to do a double major and also like a small certificate on the side and so like really focus on my academics which is awesome because a lot of college students you know aren't able to do that like they usually have an extra job um and so i don't have that stress on like, hey, I need to earn this type of income each month so that I'm able to pay, you know, for either my tuition or whatever other expenses I may have um, during the semester or the whole school year. And so that's definitely something that has helped me because now I have more time that I can put into other things. And so like not only academics, but also, you know, extracurricular activities. Um, so like, um, student clubs or student organizations as well that I'm involved in and also you know like volunteering and helping out so it's definitely like it's helped me that way because otherwise I would see myself if I didn't have a scholarship in this program um, I would see myself as probably half my day would be working and then half my day would just be classes so right. I wouldn't be able to have you know like social interaction and you know, like have extra opportunities to talk to my professors or to meet new people that could help me through my career. So my leading up to whatever I would like to do. Right. And what clubs and organizations are you involved in on campus or off campus too? Yeah, so um, I'm the vice president of the Culinary Arts Student Union. So yeah. we teach students how to cook. Um, and so we teach them like different techniques, for example, different knife skills. So what's a rough chop compared to like a chiffonade or something like that. Um, we teach them how to fillet fish, how to break up a full chicken, like things like that, that yeah. are most college students don't know and like oh, it's I nice know. because we also have a few cooking classes that are like cooking on a budget but like not just ramen you know what i mean yeah. um and just making sure also that we include different cultures so um in the past before covid um we had where we would teach about different cultures and their food so sometimes we would have an event for example for uh, Lunar New Year, um, or like, for example, we would have a Russian event with Russian food based on a holiday. Um, we would also have themes, for example, like we had one that was called World in a Pocket. And so we made a lot of dishes that had um, different like fillings inside of things. So for example, we had empanadas um, and we would fill them with ground beef, but then we also had dumplings and filled those with pork. And then we also had like vegetarian and vegan options. So different things like that, which I think was really great because we got to include like different cultures, but as well as, you know, like life skills that you can have because having healthy food in your body is very important, you know, so things like that. Um, and then I'm also part of, um, the MFOS mentor program. Um, so last year I was a peer mentor for a bunch of freshmen um, and we made sure that they were on track, um, you know, giving them advice, not only on classes, but also like campus life, dorm life, or if they wanted to move out into an apartment, helping them with that, making sure they're like doing okay and they're not wanting to drop out. Um, and so this year I got moved up into um, a leadership position so it's called lt or lead team and so we overlook now the peer mentors um, uh -huh. and if there's any like mia um, students 
or if there's students that need help, we're the ones to get in contact with and make sure that they are okay. If not, then we go up to higher up like uh, coordinators and stuff at MFOS, so yeah. Wow, how did you get involved with um, the Culinary Arts Club? Is that something you've always had an interest in? <laughs> so funny story, um, my freshman year, I was just like looking at Facebook events and things like that. And I saw one that was like, hey, free food. <laughs> I didn't even know it was a cooking class at first. Um, and so I went in and there was like this huge industrial kitchen that we have on campus. It's part of the food science department. Mm -hmm. And so um, I really enjoyed that first class because they're not only did they teach you how to cook, but also like just socializing with people and everyone was super friendly. And so I just started coming more and more often. And then got on executive board and so yeah <laughs> wow yeah I was trying to like international studies languages so it's like mm -hmm. I guess food connects there and now it's a super big hobby for me so yeah, yeah. that's a good hobby to have <laughs> um and what are your career goals do you know kind of what path you want to take mm -hmm. yeah so I feel like a lot of us, um, we have like our top goal, but then we also have like, oh, this is a backup plan just in case. And so um, my main goal is to become a foreign service officer. Um, so working within the State Department um, and basically, I don't know if you're familiar with foreign service officers, but they go into different countries um, that they're assigned to and you move like every two to three years. Um, so it definitely is a lot of traveling, but I figured, you know, I'm not tied down to anything right now, which is awesome. Um, and so like, I would love to move around and, you know, visit different countries, but what their job actually is, is just making sure like, um, all American citizens are like protected under certain rights, making sure that wherever they're traveling to, they are safe. Um, right. this also like mainly, has an impact on journalists. So for example, you know, like how sometimes journalists get involved in certain situations or like a sticky sh situation where they have to get out of, a foreign service officer is there to like help them and be like, hey, no, you shouldn't put them in jail or like things like that. Um, that's just like one of the jobs. Obviously it's very broad and it depends on what you're assigned to specifically. Mm -hmm. um, but that's like the main thing. And, um, if not, for now, my backup plan, um, I am getting a, a teaching English as a second language certificate. And so if anything, um, I would like to maybe like travel and teach abroad somewhere. There's a lot of programs, for example, um, like in Japan and Korea. So just different places, but I still have my options open. Yeah, that's that's really good. I'm kind of the same way. I'm like getting a business degree and also a history degree and we'll see where mm -hmm. I end up. But how did you um, become interested in that? I feel like that's something so like niche. Yeah, um, so since my major is international studies, um, it has a lot to do with languages and culture. So I have taken a few like linguistics courses and that's why I got involved with the teaching certificate. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, like for international studies, I kind of just chose that because I love talking to people. I feel like um, I'm pretty good at it, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> um, and so I, I definitely like having relations with people. And I think we definitely need to, um, you know, improve on that for the U.S. Um, and so also just another thing is working for the government is pretty stable in terms of pay. And, you know, like if you're thinking about your future in advance, you know, wanting to have a stable career and things like that. Um, so definitely in that aspect, but honestly, a lot of people also get involved with political science, but that's not my personal favorite thing. Um, I don't, enjoy, you know, debates or creating laws as much as just overseeing how people are and like just promoting U.S., you know, diplomacy. So, yeah. Right. That's really interesting. Um, moving it back more to the MFOS side of things, um, what does the MFOS program mean to you? Mm -hmm. um, 
I think it means family and support uh, 100% because, you know, they're there for anything you have. So it's not only just a financial aid type thing. It's also like if you are having trouble in your classes, like you can go talk to someone. That's why we have the mentorship program, um, you know, making sure that you're doing great your first year because like everyone that's in it, they're first generation students. And so honestly, their parents probably aren't able to help them as much as they would like um, in terms of, you know, how to work all of our academic schedules. How do you like start going into, you know, college? What is dorm life? You know, what is a meal plan, for example, things like that. Um, and so that's why like the mentorship program is so awesome because you have students that have already gone through that. Um, and so they're able there to give you like tips, aid, anything. Um, but then also you can talk to like, um, higher ups people. So Erica, for example, or Richard, um, if we ever have problems, we can always talk to them or just say, hi, how are you guys doing? Like, especially during COVID, I think it's really nice. They have drop in hours and, you know, if you ever want to talk, they're there for you. So that's why I love it because it feels like a family, you know, um, everyone is there to support you through your whole college experience. Right. So would you say that that kind of gave you your first like group of friends? Did that make your transition to college any easier? Were there any events or anything that kind of eased that um, transition in any way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely MFO has helped me like with the ease of everything going in um, just because, you know, I I had contacts of who I can, you know, like if I have any questions, I could get answers from them. Um, whereas before, you know, going into college, you don't know a lot of people, maybe a few people from your high school and that's it. But, um, and so, yeah, definitely I, there were a few events as well um, that they had in the beginning of the semester. I remember my freshman year, um, there was one where it was uh, celebrating first gen day. So first generation. Um, and so they had like, out in one of our plazas on campus um they had like a whole picnic thing where they had like pizza and like they were giving out food but also a lot of social interaction and it was great to meet new people like that because i was very timid my freshman year and so it was hard for me to have friends um so i met a few good friends through that and um then later on you know we hung out more, we went kayaking together, things like that. So I definitely have made friends through MFOS, so I'm very thankful for that. Um, as well as, you know, MFOS always tries to have extra events um, on campus. That way you can make more friends or you can also interact with students that are just like you. And I think it's easier to connect to people in that way because you share the same experiences and you say like, oh yeah, I didn't know how I was getting into college. Like this was crazy for me or for example, like what you're getting into now. So, oh, I didn't know how to sign up for my first classes, things like that. Um, so it definitely, there's definitely a great connection there. Right. So you have some friends who are first gen, but um, you might also have some who aren't. And mm -hmm. in what ways do you think that your experience here at UF was different than your non first generation like peers? Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, you know, friends are friends, right? So <laughs> I'm, they're not much different. But like I've said, like, if you have students that are part of MFOS um, that are your friends, you know, you can connect to them better in certain aspects, but students that aren't part of MFOS, like I can connect them on other ways as well. So maybe they were in the same class as me, or maybe they're not even the same major, but we had like similar interests in, for example, like sports or my culinary club, like things like that. So um, in terms of differences, I feel like if anything, they're good differences. Um, it's nothing like negative or, yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, and was being first generation like something you thought about coming to school or has your idea about that changed? Is it something that you would say as part of your identity? Like what is your relationship to that, I guess? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 
definitely um thanks to mfos now at least like i'm proud of that identity um mm -hmm. because before in high school it was more of like i wouldn't speak about it as much because i felt like it was something bad almost um so a lot of students like in high school they were like oh yeah my mom and dad are alumni of so-and-so, whatever university, and they would be proud of that. And that's why they wanted to go to that college. But I was almost starting on like a fresh slate. And so like, I didn't really have that experience to talk about, um, which maybe made it a little bit more difficult for me to choose a university. Um, and so I wouldn't really speak about, you know, like, oh, yeah, my parents didn't go to college. You know what I mean? Right. Um, that's something I feel like that's not something you boast about, maybe. Right. Um, and so, yeah, like I did feel timid about that identity. But once I came into UF and like we had a bunch of um, social events with MFOS, it's definitely been like, hey, I am proud of this because I am first generation. Like I'm able to get through college and graduate first out of my family. Like hopefully my brother will follow after me, like in my footsteps. And like, I, I definitely tell people now, you know, I think that's something to be proud of. And MFOS has definitely taught me to do that as well, which I'm thankful for. Yes, definitely. So do you have any other siblings? You mentioned a brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my brother right now is in high school, um, so he's currently deciding where he wants to go. He's a junior, so yes. Oh, wow, that's that's such a stressful time, all the college yeah. applications. Um, is your family pretty supportive now that you're here? Do you um, have a close relationship with them or anything? Um, I do have a close relationship with my mother, um, but I always have. And so she's definitely supportive with me, like making sure, you know, that everything's going well, um, but also not putting a lot of pressure on me, which I am thankful for because um, she wants me to do well. And so she knows that I have everything in line. And if not, then it's on me, you know, <laughs> um, I think that's a little bit of what it takes when you're growing up, you know, you learn the hard way or like you go based on your track. Um, so I'm really thankful that she is not controlling in that sense. Yeah, that is really good. Um, and while you've been at UF, um, have any faculty members um, supported you in any way? Um, and what could they do better um, as professors or like staff members to support first generation students in general or just and your experienced students? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, some professors, it really depends on you, right? So if you go to office hours or not, if you're interested in that course or if it's just like a general education type of class, maybe you're not as interested in it. So it's up to, it's up to students how well you wanna connect to them, uh, to the professors. And so I've definitely made like some good connections with my professors. Um, only a few, but still it helps because they've really helped me in terms of getting into other internships or opportunities that I would like to pursue um, while I'm here at UF, just because like, you know, letters of um, recommendation or um, helping me find my certain career path as well for undergraduate coordinators um, in certain subjects. And so that's definitely helped out um, something that could be improved on, I guess, is um, for first generation students, you know, it is still like difficult because we're unsure of what career path we want to take. I would say for most people, I don't want to speak for everyone, but it was that like in case for me, um, because I wasn't sure how college was supposed to help everything else, you know? Um, and so I realized after talking to some of my professors that like, yeah, it does take those connections, but you also have to do things outside of coursework, outside of homework, um, going to those extra, you know, informational seminars um, and seeing if that interests you. So maybe it won't interest you, but now you know not to focus on that topic. That's something I definitely learned um, from some of my professors because at first I was like, oh, well, why do we need all these extra informational sessions? Like I just have class, 
but I realized it's not like high school at all. You know, you have to, you have to go out there and see what you enjoy if you don't know yet. And so you have to take those opportunities and see what you like, what you don't like. And from there, ask more questions, get in contact with that certain person that presented on that topic that day or that evening. Yeah, those, uh, that was something coming to UF. I was not expecting some of my professors kind of forced us to go, which at first I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have time to go sit through two hours, but they really do help. Mm -hmm. um, and what were your expectations of what college would be like here at UF? And um, how has your experience been different than what you were imagining? Mm -hmm. Wow, I feel like this was so long ago. <laughs> um, honestly, coming into the university, so I didn't really tour it that much because um, I was scheduled for a tour, but I back then I had competition, so I was out of this out of state, and so I wasn't able to go. And so my in like what I envisioned UF was just like this main headquarters area with like a half circle drive-in and that was like it and so all the classes were in this one building <laughs> I didn't really think about like where I would be living or how anything was gonna take place and so that has definitely changed um UF is such a huge campus but there's also so many areas like where you can just study and like do anything there's so many so many great places um but I also didn't even think about like the people that I would meet or the connections that I would make, including with like MFOS, what connections would I make there? What would I be involved in? Um, and going back to the point, like, it's not like high school, um, you know, you're more on your own, but it's a good thing because now you can schedule, you can make your own schedule. So it wasn't like first period, second period is all this. And then afterwards you just go home and, you know, whatever sport you do or just do homework. So now it's different because now you can decide, you know, oh, do I want to take this class? And if so, you know, what time does it fit in my schedule? But also I want to make sure that I have extra time for, um, for example, like the mentorship program, you know, making sure that I am being a good peer mentor and also like the culinary stuff, you know, that takes time to set up the events, set up all the uh, like logistics side of things. So yeah, definitely has changed. <laughs> yeah. Um, as for being an MFOS mentor, were you mentored as a freshman? Is that something that all freshmen? Yes. Yeah, so it is a mandatory program. Um, so basically, all of the freshmen, they get assigned to certain peer mentors. Um, and it's only for your first year, um, just to make sure that you're on the right track. Um, also like the ins and outs of the university. So what's a good place to eat in town? Like things like that too, any questions um, about health insurance as well, or like financial aid, like, oh, this didn't get dispersed or where should I go to ask these certain questions for advising? Things like that as well, because it is difficult. Your parents can't answer those questions and you know, where, where are you supposed to get that information? You know, sometimes it's difficult to understand what's going on on a website or online. So yeah, definitely um, that type of thing. What was your question again? Sorry. Um, I was just wondering if that was something that oh, okay. freshmen had to do. And honestly, is it different as a mentor? I guess, of course it is, but like, how has that experience kind of changed like with MFOS from the other side, I guess. Yeah, so um, you can be a mentor starting your sophomore year. Um, and so I definitely wanted to join that right away afterwards because I was like, wow, this helped me so much that I wanna like give back and help others because now I know all this information, why not give it to others since I went through that same experience. So all peer mentors are um, supposed to be part of the MFOS program. So it can't be um, anyone coming from the outside type of thing, but that's only because, you know, we have sh uh, different shared experiences. So I think it's different, you know, coming into college and you not knowing as much um, since you are first generation and being able 
to know what information to give, if that makes sense. Um, so knowing what is helpful and what isn't. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, definitely I wanted to, you know, become a parent mentor. I think it was helpful for me. And so why not help others that are incoming freshmen? Um, and yeah, so it, it is mandatory for freshmen, but I think it's important. Um, if it wasn't mandatory, I mean, maybe less pe less students would be involved in it. But mm -hmm. at the same time, like maybe they would drop out or fail their classes because they didn't have that advising otherwise. Yeah. Um, do you plan once you graduate and you're an alum, do you plan on staying involved with MFOS and kind of in what ways? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so MFOS has like uh, an alumni type group. Um, so I definitely want to still uh, stay in contact with them because they've helped me so much. Um, and so obviously there's always donors. So I may become a donor once I'm on salary and things like that. Um, also, a lot of times they have um, alumni come in and like um, talk about their experiences as well as talk about advice or their certain career path. Um, there's always seminars for that. And so like if someone is interested in pursuing international studies or international relations, um, if they welcome me, if they ask me to do a meeting or whatever it may be, I can go and speak to students about that and how my experience was being first generation. So definitely helping out students throughout all my years, I think would be great. Yeah. Um, is there kind of anything else that you want to make sure that I know or we know as part of the like overall project about MFOS? Anything you want to add that I haven't asked about yet? No, that just that I'm really grateful for MFOS and like, thank you. Um, I'm glad that we're doing this uh, oral history type thing to, you know, record certain memories or certain stories such as mine. So I'm really thankful for that. And thank you, Olivia. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I have one final question. This is part um, kind of of our project. We're going to do like a mural type thing with um, what is one word that you would use to describe your college experience and MFOS? Hmm. I know, kind of a loaded question. <laughs> um, A one word type thing. This is yeah. difficult. Give me a second. I apologize. Yeah, no problem. No problem. <laughs> Can I just say like experience? So like a great yeah. experience, because I feel like there's always going to be ups and downs, um, but it's still like everything happens for a reason, right? So I always go by that motto and, you know, I'm I'm thankful that I came to UF thanks to um, MFOS and that has caused me to have a lot of experiences that I probably wouldn't have had at any other university. So it's great. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. I don't have any more questions for you, but thank you so much for your time today. Um, I can keep you in the loop. If you want to hear about this project, I can send it. Yes, to you. for sure. Yes. Keep me updated if anything. Um, and let me know if you need anything else from me. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.